Hi, and welcome. This will be the final video on cross number eight. I'll go over all the different phenotypes in this cross and compare them to the expected outcomes. I'll also highlight some interesting individuals and discuss potential future crosses using these offspring. For those new to this channel, my name is Ivan. My goal is to create a guppy line with a stable snow white color, starting with diverse individuals. Crosses 2 and 8 are the most relevant for this video. Cross 8 involves a female from Cross 2 and Gandalf. Labeled C2, she stood out with her larger tail and dorsal fins. This female carries multiple heterozygous traits that would contribute to the white phenotype. While I delve deeper into genetics in earlier videos, she is heterozygous for gray-based, magenta, European blau, and Storzbach. Our focus is restoring the white color found in snow white or platinum white guppies, which is a white color on a blonde-based body. A blonde-based body, like European blau and Storzbach, is recessive. Magenta is less relevant because it is a dominant gene, and all her offspring will inherit at least one dominant allele. Because Gandalf is homozygous for the three relevant genes, and our C2 female is heterozygous for him, we anticipate eight potential phenotypes in cross 8. This aligns with the expected phenotypes from cross 7. While we might encounter some unexpected variations, the overall trend should remain consistent. I'll sort the offspring and calculate phenotype percentages in the next part of the video. If you prefer to skip this section and view results directly, look for the timestamp in the video's bottom corner. Alright, let's begin with the males. The total brood for cross 8 consisted of 41 guppies, including 15 males. I initially separated males by their most apparent characteristic, base body color. I counted 6 blonde and 9 gray-based males. The next easiest trait to identify was European blau. I considered any gupping lacking red pigment as expressing European blau. So of the 6 males that were blonde, 4 were red to some degree and therefore not expressing European blau. The remaining 2 were then expressing European blau. From the group of nine gray males, seven were not expressing European blau, and the remaining two did. Storzbach was the final characteristic, which is the most challenging for me to identify accurately. A guppy might appear metallic, yet lack vibrant white color. Therefore, I relied on the iridescence of the guppy's back and top sides. From the blonde-based red male group, only one male looked like he was expressing Storzbach, with three males that didn't. Among the blonde European blau males, none appeared to express Storzbach at all. Any males resembling the Snow White strain would have been in this group. The two without Storzbach exhibited a transparent white appearance. Among the gray-based red males, three exhibited Storzbach while four did not. The gray-based and European blau expressing group had one that did and one that didn't express Storzbach. That's eight distinct phenotypes. I've organized and stacked them in their own acrylic boxes for now, and will revisit the males after analyzing the females. So just like the males, I separated the 26 females by base body color first. This resulted in 12 blonde and 14 gray-based females. Among the blonde females, only two showed red pigment, suggesting a lack of European blau expression. The other 10 females likely expressed European blau. Out of the 14 gray females, only four looked like they had any red pigment compared to 10 that were likely expressing European blau. These results favor European blau expression. This skew might be attributed to females generally exhibiting less color, making subtle red pigments harder to detect in younger individuals. On a similar note, I couldn't reliably identify Storzbach expression in the females. There were times where I would notice a strong metallic shimmer, but these were inconsistent and brief. So, there we have it. 
eight different phenotypes identified the best I could. Let's see how these numbers stack up to the expected 50-50 distribution for each trait. On screen, the video will only show the males, but the calculations include the females, except for Storzbach. Looking at base body color, Cross 8 had a total of 18 blonde guppies and 23 gray guppies. This works out to a 44 to 56% split between the two respectively. Not down the middle, but not super far off either. Looking at European Blau, the total comes to 24 expressing to 17 non-expressing guppies. Percentage-wise, that's 59 to 41% respectively. A little further away from down the middle, but still not too bad. I imagine that if the brood size was greater than 41 total guppies, these numbers would tend more towards even. Regarding Storzbach, focusing on males, we found 5 expressing the trait and 10 without. This equates to a 33% to a 67% distribution respectively, skewed towards non-expression. This skew might be attributed to the small sample size of 15 males and potential misidentification due to the challenge of recognizing Storzbach. Nonetheless, it provides a general understanding of the phenotype distribution within this brood. I want to focus on this gray male for a bit. He is a gray-based guppy that is likely expressing Storzbach, but not European Blau. He actually looks almost pink. But what is interesting is that he shows a little bit of that iridescent forehead I mentioned in the last Cross 8 video. I aim to pass this trait to future white lines, but the underlying genetics are unclear to me. To understand its inheritance, I am planning on crossing this male with potentially two females. It will be a fun set of crosses that are a little different than what I've been doing so far, so keep an eye out for them. Another interesting male is this gray-based individual, likely expressing European Blau without Storzbach. Note the increased volume of his tail and dorsal fins compared to his siblings. As his C2 mother shared similar longer finage, I was curious if this trait would be inherited, and it seems there is a chance it was. I currently don't have any plans with this male, so he will go to a good home under someone else's care. I do plan to use some of the females though. Even though I have a hard time pinning down females that express Storzbach, I managed to single out two blonde based females that looked the brightest. I placed them into their own tank and introduced them to the stunning gray based white male from Cross 7. This will be the start of Cross 13. It is also slightly different from my crosses 10 through 12 because I am using a gray based rather than a blonde based male. I'll talk more about the implications of that in their own dedicated video. As I mentioned before, this is the last update video on Cross 8, and the remaining brood will be going to new homes. If you are interested in any of these, go ahead and email me. We still have plenty of work left to reach our goal of a line of guppies that breeds true for the white color. If this is something that you find interesting, please consider subscribing to follow along with the rest of this journey. Cross 9 will be the focus of the next video. It will be relatively short as the fry are still developing their colors, but they are growing fast. Here are a few update clips of my other crosses so far. Crosses 10 and 12 have not produced fry yet. The small batch of fry in cross 11 are growing fast and one of the females should be dropping any time now. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.